مرحبا اهلا شو تبغين اليوم او شو تبغين اليوم بالليل what i'm cooking what i will be cooking tonight are homemade refried beans with corn tortillas eggs salsa guacamole so a mexican feast what will you be cooking tonight well just when you thought we were done with our kitchen series I decided that I should do one more video on kitchen methods, cooking methods. I did have some requests and to be honest, I actually wanted to originally teach on that. However, I got a little out of control and crazy with my kitchen idioms and I ran out of time. Our first English word is to slice. To slice. This is sliced bread. The bread is sliced the same. So when you slice a food, you slice it in the same way. So here I will slice an orange my mom and dad sent me, my husband and our family, these delicious honey bell oranges from Florida. They're in season. <clears throat> They're a little bit expensive. They are the juiciest orange you will ever taste. So delicious. So as you can see, I'm slicing the orange, not very well, but slicing it uh, the same size, in the same direction, sliced oranges. I can't wait to eat this later. Okay, our next term is to chop. Chop. I have some cabbage, and if we chop it, we just chop it. Chop, chop. Chop, chop. Sometimes uh, when here in America, if somebody wants you to hurry up, they say, chop, chop. Hurry up, kids. Chop, chop. Get ready for bed. So this might be considered chopped. Now, if a recipe tells you to dice, dice is typically a little smaller. So if you dice, you just chop it smaller. Dice. A, a small dice might be one eighth of an inch. A medium dice, one fourth of an inch. And a large dice would probably be a chop. Now, if a recipe tells you to mince, mince, then that is chop it as small as you can mince. I love the color of cabbage. It's so pretty. It's one of my favorites. Oh, look, we match. If a recipe says add a dash or a pinch or a smidgen, a dash, a pinch, a smidgen, I just take a little pinch, the salt or a spice and throw it in. Maybe a dash and a smidgen is a little more than a pinch. I don't know. I guess it depends on your personal preference. Our next word is blanch. Blanch. Here in the United States, blanch is the name for a woman and usually it's an older woman because it's an old name. So my Aunt Blanche and my Aunt Marge are such funny old ladies. But Blanche also means let's pretend I go out to my garden, I pick 
a lot of string beans. I bring them inside and I want to freeze them because I have a lot of string beans. I would blanch them. So to blanch is to dump the string beans in a pot of boiling water and cook them a very short amount of time, maybe 30 seconds, maybe a minute or two. Blanch them in the hot boiling water, drain them in a colander, and then quickly pour the, the beans into ice water. And that stops the cooking process and then you drain them and freeze them, put them in a freezer and fully cook them later. Blanch. To whisk. This utensil happens to be a whisk and if a recipe tells you to whisk, it means to incorporate air. So many times you whisk your eggs to make scrambled eggs. Whisk, it means a, a fast, uh, vigorous movement. This is also a whisk that you would use with an electric mixer. So that will give you an even more powerful whisking motion. Whisk. Now, if a recipe tells you to beat, to beat the ingredients, that means to combine ingredients. Maybe you need to beat together flour, eggs, oil, salt, and sugar. Typically, you would beat ingredients in a mixer. You would allow electricity and pow power to work for you. But sometimes you can hand beat. You can use your hand and beat the ingredients together. The difference between whisk and beat, the difference between whisk and beat is that whisk is incorporating air into the product so it's fluffy. Beat is mixing and combining ingredients. Our next term is stir, stir. 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 If you stir the ingredients, you mix them, you combine the ingredients, maybe eggs, flour, butter, but you don't, you don't beat, you stir. Maybe you stir something cooking on the stove. If you're making a recipe for pancakes or blueberry muffins, you want to stir very gently because if you over stir the batter, the muffins, the waffles, the pancakes will be tough and chewy and you want them to be melt in your mouth tender. So you would stir your batter very gently. I think it has something to do with the gluten. Fry. Ooh, this one is a favorite with a lot of people. French fries. To fry means to cook in fat. Oil, butter. You can fry things in a frying pan or some people use a deep fryer. I actually have one in my basement, but I didn't bring it up, but it's a big, looks like a box. Fill it with oil. There's a basket and you can deep fry potatoes, egg rolls, spring rolls. Frying food is not something we do a lot because we, we try to be healthy, but it sure is a delicious way to make and eat food. I should mention that if you deep fry food in a fryer, you would usually do that at a temperature of 350 to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, our next term is stir fry. Stir fry, it's commonly used in Asian cooking. It's, uh, this would be, it's sort of like a wok, this pan, sort of like a wok. You would uh, 
cook over very high heat with oil and stir fry, you would stir it constantly. I think vegetables and meats cook rather quickly this way. If you pan fry or saute, pan fry or saute, you would add oil or butter to your pan and I think of an example of something I love to pan fry. I put some olive oil in the pan. Uh, I put chopped garlic in the pan cold. Then I turn up the heat so the garlic cooks slowly and it brings out the flavors. And then when the pan is hot, before the garlic burns, I add fresh spinach and I saute the spinach in the oil with the garlic and the house smells so good. And then when the spinach is wilted and, and done, it doesn't take long, then I add a little bit of salt and voila, it's delicious. And my friend Danielle taught me how to do that. So thank you, Danielle, if you're watching. If a recipe tells you to bake, bake a cake, this is simply using dry heat, like con convection heat, in an enclosed area like an oven to bake something. So you would bake a pie, bake a cake, bake your chicken, lots of things that we use our oven for to bake. Now, if a recipe tells you to roast, roast, this is similar to baking, but at a high temperature, very hot, maybe around 500 degrees Fahrenheit. I think the purpose of roasting at high temperatures is to seal in the moisture. So the outside, maybe of a, a piece of meat, cooks quickly and sears and it keeps the moisture inside. To steam, steam. Using hot water vapor to cook vegetables or fish, this steamer basket fits inside my fry pan. And so you would put a little bit of water at the bottom of the pan, turn up the heat and the hot vapor, the steam, will cook the vegetables or the fish in the steamer. Very healthy way to cook. Do you know what temperature water boils at? Well, I didn't either until I looked it up yesterday, but uh, apparently water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit or do you know what that is Celsius? 100 degrees Celsius. So if you boil something, you boil the water and then you add your pasta or potatoes and you boil until cooked. Boil. Do you remember the idiom simmer down, simmer down? This is when water or another liquid is boiling and you turn the heat down so that the, the water stops boiling and it's a very gentle boil, just a little simmer. Okay. Okay. I'm a dork, I know, but I enjoy myself. Broil. Broil. It sounds like oil, but it has a br on the front of it. Broil. Broil is the opposite of grill. Do you remember to grill someone? You know, that was kind of a, that was kind of a weird idiom. Do you know when I was teaching that idiom to grill someone? I never even thought about how 
creepy that was of an idiom. That's a creepy idiom to grill someone. But anyway, so we know what grilling is on a charcoal grill or a gas grill. Uh, to broil is the reverse or the opposite of grilling because the heat, the intense hot heat comes from the top. Now in my stove and in most stoves in the United States, the, broil the broiler is on the top of the stove. So I broil, I put bread under the broiler that's buttered, maybe with some garlic salt or garlic, garlic powder. I quickly broil it so that the bread with the butter gets lightly brown and delicious. Or I make a lazy daisy cake and it has coconut on top with butter and brown sugar. And I turn on the broiler and I slide that cake underneath the broiler and the hot heat caramelizes the coconut mixture on top of the cake and browns it. And it's so delicious. Uh, I also, we also fancy using the broiler for cheese chips. So what's better than tortilla chips with cheese, Mexican cheese on top, maybe some sliced jalapeno peppers, stick that baby under the broiler. Mm, it's the best. And the last kitchen term for today is dredge. Dredge. Now this word caused some problems early on in my marriage, caused a little debate because I asked my husband to help me in the kitchen with dinner and he was happy to help because he's a good egg. However, when I told him to dredge the chicken in the flour, he looked at me incredulously and said, dredge? That's what they do on the side of the road in ditches with trucks. That's what men working, they, they dredge. You don't dredge food. And I said, well, honey, it's right here in the cookbook. It says dredge. So to dredge, you dredge chicken or a vegetable, maybe zucchini. You pull it through flour or breadcrumbs or cornmeal, you lightly coat the food you're working with in flour, breadcrumbs, cornmeal, and then many times you would fry it, pan fry it, or deep fry it. So that is our last word for today, dredge. Well, shukran lak, shukran laki, shukran, Lakum. Let me know if that's right for a group. Uh, I had fun. Mumtia. I hope to see you again soon. Inshallah. Shuf. Entu. Uh, soon. I don't know. Mabarif. Ma Mabarif. Lakin. Uh, I will see you soon. Thanks for joining me today. Bye for now. Ma'asalami.